we are starting to get towards the business end of the season. We've finally managed to break into the playoffs. But can we stay there? Following on from the last episode, then the first game was away from home against Burnley. And we were so fortunate to come out of this with three points. Ruben Burgos put us ahead 43 minutes in. He got himself sent off in the 62nd minute. But we just about managed to hold on. And I think Burnley win fifth place at the time. So it was a very, very good win. We then hosted Brighton and managed to win ourselves another, <laughs> managed to win ourselves 2-1. Luke Daly with the goal, Nathan Ferguson with the own goal, Lucas Vigel with the goal for them. And something broke in my brain after this game. We went away from home against Leeds. They are really struggling in the league this season. And we got beat 3-0 and uh, I just, I'm not liking our tactic and our formation. We're not getting the best out of our attacking players. It's really starting to cost us and... I would go in, in a, potentially if we can get there into the playoffs. I wouldn't feel confident that we're actually going to be able to make it and win the playoffs. So I've kind of, after this point, there has been a slight change in tactic. And it did pay off in the very first game. We managed to beat Wigan 4 1 at home. Fabio Barini for the penalty spot. Lewis O'Brien. Ira de Kunda, the centre half, the one we signed from Arsenal. That's the guy. And Ben Beachy got the goal. So we're getting a little bit more of our attacking players with this formation. Uh, one more game, which was a 2-1 away win against Hull City. Now, if you remember, Hull are one of the sides who were sitting in the playoff spot. So to get this sort of win away from home was absolutely huge. Alex Moat did put them in front 20 minutes in through the penalty spot. Of course, our former man. Um, but Lewis O'Brien and Dimitri Principato got a goal apiece to give us the three points. So the championship table is looking like this. We now sit in sixth position, two points clear from Stoke and Hull in seventh and eighth. We're a bit far off automatic, so I think right now we can rule that out. Newcastle and Wolves are very likely to end up getting promoted automatically. We just need to solidify ourselves as a playoff team and get prepared for such an eventuality. But talking about the tactic, this is it. <laughs> so basically, we've removed a centre-half, we've removed a striker and put them on the wings. Um, we've dropped the deep line playmaker back and this is what we were left with. We don't really have the players to match this system. But I'm a lot happier with how the... Even if our results don't change that much, I'm a lot happier with how the performances have been going. The attacking players are getting a decent ratings now. They're getting involved in the game more. We're creating opportunities. And even if we have the exact same results, I can guarantee you I'd feel more satisfied with how our attacking players are going in particular. So that takes us to today's games. Then there will be against Sheffield Wednesday at home and Blackburn Rovers away from home. Sheffield Wednesday are really struggling, sitting in 23rd, and Blackburn are around mid-table, sitting in 15th. So this is the sort of side that we're going to be playing now. Pereira will, of course, still be in goal. Guell and Mick Quirk, I think, are our two best centre-backs, basically. Guell is just returning from injury, so he will take some time to readjust back to being a starter. But Mick Quirk, of course, has done some excellent stuff for us over the course of this season, so he retains his spot. And that means our new signing does drop to the bench for now. Maybe we might end up looking at things again during the off-season, whether we're in the Championship or the Premier League. But for now, he has been dropped to the bench. Benassar picks up his spot in defensive midfield and O'Brien is going to be our main man in the centre. Ben Beachy, our new striker signer, moves out of that right-hand side as an inverted winger. Doesn't exactly suit him down to the ground, but I think his performances... Ha no, I don't think. I know his performances have improved since we put him on that right-hand side. Stankwo is another one whose performances have improved since the change in system. Um, having more players around him means I think we're getting more and better stuff out of him. Fabio Barini is going to start on the left-hand side again. Not an ideal player. Not a player I would usually be uh, relying on, but for now, it's going to have to do. And Prince of Porto will start up top. So I'm hoping to see over the next five games or so, the team start performing better getting more goals, creating more chances as we get used to this new system and as it gets, um, as, the, as the new players start to bed themselves in as well because they are still very fresh, only five, six, seven games into their uh, Huddersfield careers for many of them. So I have to give it time and I have to not panic and hopefully we can get playoffs whilst it is happening. We're up against Sheffield Wednesday. They're playing a 4-4-2. They've got two good strikers. Uh, Oberfemi is just fast absolutely rapid i wouldn't have minded him at us for this season and christian bentek is of course a very good target man even with his diminished stats with his advanced age but we'll move on to kick off and see how we get on against sheffield wednesday 
First highlight of the game comes one minute in it. Sheffield Wednesday on the attack, but Quirk gets his head on it. He's a monster at the back. Stankwell with the ball over the top. Prince of Porto is in behind. He's not Esposito, is he? <laughs> Uh, by the way, I did look at Esposito. He's now getting game time at Inter Milan on £70,000 a week. So it wasn't a B for the third time round. 12 minutes in and we have ourselves the second highlight. Eight Benassar bringing the ball forward from defensive midfield. Finding Fabio Barini who is cutting inside. or oh, got loads of space on this right hand side. Please make use of it. Ben Beachy finds Prince Aparto in the box. What a save. What a save that was by Dawson. We should be 1-0 up. Prince Aparto are now with two good opportunities to put us in front. Corner, is it going to lead anything? Fabio Barini on the edge? No, it's not. It's over. It's over, right? It is over. Holmes coming down this left hand there. It's over. I've got to give the Italian striker time. Prince Aparto, he's got good attributes. I've got to give him time to get himself into the squad, get himself used to the new country, new league. But I have to say, I'm not enjoying his performances so far. We'll pick up with another highlight though, 35 minutes in, Fabio Barini on the left hand side finds Ben Beachy by switching the player, he's got support if he needs it, he goes for goal himself, an ambitious strike, um, Dawson with another good save to keep Sheffield Wednesday in it, we'll stick with this corner just in case, on the off chance, Ben Assar, uh, Prince Parto got his head in it, straight at the keeper. And that is going to be that for the first half, complete domination by ourselves, just unable to find that finishing touch. Stanko is having a good game, playing in attack and midfield, which is nice to see. And five minutes into the second half, we have ourselves the first highlight. Lewis O'Brien finds Ayat Benassar. We've got men forward. We'll find uh, Berjos on this right-hand side. Back post, back post, please. He has done it. Uh, it's cleared. And it's going to be a Sheffield Wednesday break. Oberfemi, we know he's got pace. We've pinpointed that at the beginning of the game. Fantastic save. Fantastic save by Pereira, Keep, <laughs> keeping us in it. Sheffield Wednesday's first chance of the game should have put them 1-0 up. The same highlights continuing. No, that's what I thought. Stanko picks up the ball on the right-hand side after a throw-in. Berjos out. Oh, Brian. Oh, I just had visions. I had visions of that ripple in the top corner. Right, we're going to have to make changes. Prince Aparto is not having a good, good game. We're going to take him off. We're going to bring on Albion Ajeti up front. Um, what else we're going to do? We're going to bring Kazoo on for Luke Daly on that left hand side, and we're also going to bring on Ryan Niambia for Burgos on that right hand side. Bring some fresh legs in the wing back rolls as they are always, always knackered. Come on, boys, 15 minutes to go. Get this goal to put us 1 0 in front. Quirks tries to switch the pair to the left hand side. Passing is clearly not his forte as Holmes and I offer keep the ball nicely for Sheffield Wednesday. We do win a bat though in the midfield and stank or. Players. That was a weird header. Ejeti on this left-hand side. He's drifted out wide. He finds Barini in the box. He goes for goal. Fabio Barini. He's ninth goal of the season. He's played all over the park for me. He finds himself in his more natural position on the left-hand side. And he gets his ninth goal of the season. Putting us 1-0 up. We needed that. We really, really did. Sheffield Wednesday are not a good side. We can't be affording to drop points against these sort of teams. And Barini with a beautiful finish. Another highlight now with only 12 minutes to go we have dropped back to a more positive uh, team mentality to stop the boys pushing forward too much but um i still wouldn't ma oh man no ben Teke hasn't got the pace but Oberfemi has he plays it in Oberfemi. he's in behind we know he's in behind joel Pereira again with another good save maybe you will just uh drop the line a little bit huh all right more standard defensive line i think and time is ticking away in this one three minutes of injury time is there going to be another highlight, maybe a chance for Sheffield Wednesday? It doesn't look like it's going to be. And we get ourselves a 1-0 win. Fabio Barini with the goal in the 76th minute. <sighs> he bailed us out there. He really, really did. Blackburn's up next. I'll see you there. So we're back for the game against Blackburn Rovers. No changes to the starting eleven as things stand. We will keep things the same as the win against Sheffield Wednesday. Hopefully, Prince of Porto might start... Um, Hitting the ground running a little bit. We're sort of running out of time to give him time to gel into the squad and stuff. But you've got to give him time, Sam. Please give him time. The issue is I've been spoiled for strikers with both Barnsley and Birmingham. So when you sign one who doesn't hit the ground running, it's a little bit disappointing. But we'll see how things go into this game. O'Brien picks up the ball, whips it into Barini. Oh, he hits a bar. Free kick. O'Brien is the man to take it. It goes back post. Oh, it's cleared off the line. I think Jadas got it off the line. I think it was Beachy with the header. And we almost go 1-0 up. The highlight does continue. Berjos whips the ball in. It's cleared. 
And surely that is the end of end of highlight. End of highlight. I don't like this. Blackburner keeping possession really, really well. Silver drives forward and goes for goal. Just don't show me that. Another highlight now. Jadas picks up the ball in the midfield for Blackburn. Rovers feeds in to Madron. And they come forward through the centre. Jadas has found a pocket of space over the top. He's in behind. <sighs> Pretty close. And there goes the first half. Not a lot happening, uh, particularly from our side. Blackburn are the more likely of us to score, even with the match stats looking in our favour. We'll see how this second half goes. Again, Stank was having a good game. I like to say that. Prince of Porto, not so much. Highlight now. Jadas with a free kick for Blackburn. Plays it short to Siglio. Goes for goal. Oh, he's offside. He's offside. No need to panic. No need to worry. Louis Madron um, was the man who hit the ball after Jadas had took the strike. And we survive ourselves another attack. Another corner. Blackburn again. We managed to get a clear can stank or counter for us. 20 minutes remaining on the clock. He is... He's got Prince of Porto in support and not a lot else. He finds O'Brien on the edge. Oh, we need to hit the back of the net. Fabio Barini is struggling out there. We'll get Albion Ejeti on on that left-hand side. Does mean Prince of Porto is probably going to see out the rest of this game. It's Ben Beachy not having the greatest game on the right-hand side. Um, but we'll see how the rest of this game goes with 20 minutes remaining. We're going to go attack and we need a win. And time is ticking away. It doesn't look like the goal is going to come in today's game. And looking at the match stats, we should probably be doing a lot better with that. But if you go by the highlights, I think Blackburn had the better of the game. Um, so it swings and roundabouts, really. With six games remaining in the league season, we sit in the playoffs. Three points clear from Hull City in seventh place. We've got six games to figure this out. Um, we need to stay in the playoffs, obviously. Uh, we need to keep up the momentum that we've got going. In terms of, we we've been doing pretty well. I mean, this when did we, we took over here. Um, we've done pretty well. We haven't been beat that many times. We're doing okay. I just don't feel, it's something doesn't feel right with the squad. It doesn't feel like I've got the right, um, the, the right formation, the right tactic. Something hasn't clicked quite yet. Maybe it'll come in the next few games. The next episode then. Um, if we could... <laughs> if we're in the playoffs, I'm going to skip straight to the playoffs. If it comes to this Bristol City game and we're not quite in the playoffs yet, I might have to bring you an episode then. Maybe the Sunderland and Bristol City game just to get us over the line and in case we'll miss out, which is a possibility. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.